Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll just start with a few announcements which is usually how I start the Tuesday edition and the first thing I want to tell you is that in another week the cannabis course is coming up and um, it's a four-part course where we're going to look at the health benefits, the detrimental effects of cannabis, the legalization issues, um, who benefits, who doesn't benefit, uh, give some guidance as to how it should be used and shouldn't be used and so if you're a healthcare professional or just a person who's curious about this for your own reasons or for family reasons, you definitely want to be in this course. Um, second thing, conference, November 8th through 10th. That's not very far from now, actually. Um, and this year, we're going to do the same thing we did last year, which is that everybody who comes to the conference gets a $500 gift certificate toward um, our new courses or package of courses and that sort of thing. So this is the only conference, I think, in the United States where you're going to come to the conference and walk away with more money than you spent when you came to the conference, which is actually pretty cool when you think about it. So if you're not registered yet, we still do have room for you. You can go to wellnessformhealth.com or send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and I will send you information and a registration form. You don't wanna miss this weekend. We have some exciting things planned, including um, a panel discussion about vaccines. We have a very important cancer researcher coming, Dr. Tom Seafried, who's gonna talk about his work and uh, his incredible textbook, Cancer is a Metabolic Disease, and uh, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to be hearing me talk about it for several weeks after the conference is over on video clips and then say, gosh, I wish I had been there. Um, the big announcement today is today is October 1st, and it is the official launch of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, where I normally spend all of my time complaining about the abysmal promotion of pink M&Ms and chicken buckets, but this year we're doing something different, which is asking women to sign a pledge form that they will work to reduce their risk of breast cancer by um, uh, eating a plant-based diet, reducing alcohol intake, uh, exercising more, and achieving normal weight, uh, ideal weight. And these are constructive strategies that are important and actually do reduce the risk of developing breast cancer. Women who sign the pledge will get a $100 gift certificate toward our courses. They will also get a free online lecture on how to reduce the risk of breast cancer. So all the things that I'm talking about is risk reduction strategies. I've got a, a lecture about them that you'll be able to watch online if you uh, sign the pledge. And um, um, our goal is to get thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of women to sign the pledge because wouldn't it be great if everybody committed to that? We really would reduce the incidence of breast cancer if everybody would, would commit to it. And if you are interested in distributing pledge cards, um, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com because anybody who gets 100 or more of these gets an additional $100 gift certificate. So a person who signs the pledge card and distributes the pledge cards can get $200 that you can spend on wellness form courses. And that's kind of exciting when you think about it. All right, um, I want to respond to some things that, um, as I usually do on Tuesday also, that you guys bring up on YouTube channel comments where it's just something that I can't just type a couple sentences in response to. So the first thing is a couple of people have written over the years, um, not a couple, a lot actually, um, that, gosh, I'm exercising and I still have belly fat. Um, I'm exercising, I walk, I do this, I do that, and you know, my body's not changing or I'm still overweight, what am I doing wrong? And so um, I guess the, the short answer is if you are engaging in exercise and your body is not visibly changing as a result of it, and you probably need to do more or more intense or work with somebody who can help you step it up. So there's a difference between just moving around. I mean, you know, you can go out and walk around the block, for example, or even walk around the block for 45 minutes. But if you're really not getting your heart rate up, if you're not working hard enough at it, you're simply not going to get the results that you're looking for uh, from that activity. So most people are doing some movement. I mean, I have to say one thing that's improved is I'm not meeting quite as many people who say I don't move at all. I still meet some of those. Some of them are in my family, in fact, but but most people are are doing some movement. But, but the problem is that the amount of movement that they're doing is just not really enough to make a difference. So um, if you're doing strength training, but your body isn't changing, you're not getting rid of the belly fat and all that sort of thing, then work out with a trainer who can help you accomplish your goals. Even if you only do this sporadically, in other words, we have some people who come to us here 
and work out with us every you know month or so they'll come in and we'll change it up for them and then they have something to do and to work on for a month and then they come back the next month and etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's something that you might do um, just one of the things we're working on to keep in mind for the future is a virtual training platform where we would actually have the ability to uh, train you remote and uh, that that will be coming soon have a lot of things on the agenda right now particularly really focusing on this breast cancer awareness month because October 31st will be here before you know it and um, uh, and then it's over so we have to maximize our opportunities during this very uh, important 31 days um, a lot of the, a lot of comments back on the um, uh, on my conversation about the vaping and e-cigarettes and and um, I posted something last week about uh, uh, the fact that um, uh, I had predicted that this was going to happen in 2016 and by the way when I predict that bad things are going to happen it gives me no pleasure in being proven right I mean please prove me wrong that bad things aren't going to happen right so I, I would like to to have this turned out differently. But um, one thing, is, is a question that came up, more than one person asked this, well, do you just think that we should ban all tobacco? Um, I don't. And, and most of the time, you guys, I'm not talking about banning anything. My, the focus of my discussions really is about informed decision making, okay? And that right now, as it stands, when it comes to almost anything health related or, or medically related, there is no requirement for people to give truthful information to consumers before they make a choice. Now, if you walked into a store where they sell the vaping stuff and they said, listen, if you're going to buy this, we have some important things to tell you before you make this decision. These are some of the things that could happen to you if you were to take up this habit. Now, an individual who reads that and says, I don't care, I'm gonna do it anyway. Or I think that the benefit I'm gonna get because I'm trying to quit smoking, for example, uh, is worth the uh, risk I'm gonna take. Or I know it doesn't work for most people to quit smoking because that's the truth about it, but I'm going to try it myself anyway. That's all fine with me. What I'm arguing about is the fact that people buy this kind of thing every day in the United States of America without knowing that, and then when they end up getting sick because of it, or it doesn't work for smoking or whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish, and it doesn't, it's not limited to e-cigarettes, by the way, it's, it's everything. When it doesn't work out, then they're flabbergasted and surprised. And, and often they had not only not been given disclosure about what could go wrong, the benefits were incredibly over-exaggerated. So please understand that my deal is not to ban everything. And by the way, if you want to read about why we should not ban things, go read about what happened during Prohibition. That was probably the best thing that ever happened for the, for the organized crime families in the United States was Prohibition. So I don't think we want to go back there again. I think we just have got to get to the place where medical consumers are entitled to the same kinds of rights that consumers of other things are. You know, it, it, thanks to some laws that I think were good to have passed, um, mortgage brokers and financial advisors have more difficulty taking advantage of people than they used to. There are disclosures required when you sign mortgage documents and that sort of thing. And so that's what I want to see happen here. And since that's not being done, I use this YouTube channel and my newsletter to inform people about this type of thing because there's very little opportunity for people to get objective information about many of the topics I talk about someplace else. All right, so let's move on to today's topic. And this is um, something that was fascinating to me. So people promoting high fat diets make a lot of claims and they're making a lot of claims right now um, as they try to attempt to justify consuming more dietary fat. And it's getting harder to do that because the evidence is overwhelming that this is not a good idea. Well, one of the claims that is made is that in order to absorb fat soluble vitamins like vitamins A, E, and K, you have to consume them with fat. Thus, according to some, you got to pour olive oil over a salad or you don't get the benefits of the vegetables or you have to um, uh, stir fry in oil and you know, all, all kinds of things to add fat to the diet. I have to tell you, I don't see very many people who need to add more fat to the diet, except for people with eating disorders, and that's an entirely different thing than what we're talking about here. 
Well, I've argued for years that, that this is utter nonsense. First of all, our hunter-gatherer ancestors didn't have the ability to ensure that certain vitamins were consumed with fat or certain foods were consumed in combination. They had to eat what was available when it was available. And so many of the things that people talk about today, you just wonder how humanity survived for me to be able to make this video and you to watch it if we had to have all this special combining and supplementation and all that sort of thing. And many populations like the Okinawans eat a very, very low fat and they don't seem to be suffering from nutrient deficiencies. So anyway, even better though, a new research study that tested this idea showed that fat does not need to be consumed at the same time as vitamin E a fat soluble vitamin in order for the vitamin to be absorbed and utilized. The study looked at vitamin E absorption in women who were between the ages of 18 and 40, who weren't obese, weren't diabetic, and who had normal blood pressure, so healthy people. They were given vitamin E both orally and via IV, and then they consumed a liquid meal that was either 40% fat or zero fat. The study showed that vitamin E consumed orally waits in the intestine until it is picked up by um, uh, chylomicrons, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which are lipoproteins that transport dietary fats throughout the body via the bloodstream. When the vitamin E was delivered via IV, it was gone from the bloodstream in 10 minutes or so, again picked up by these lipoproteins and delivered directly to the liver for storage. Um, while some high fat foods um, uh, are high in vitamin E, and so some examples would be almonds, peanuts, and avocados, many of our people who are eating a low fat diet are getting their vitamin E from foods like spinach, Swiss chard, butternut squash, beet greens, sweet red peppers, mangoes, turnip greens, and kiwi fruit. So first of all, they don't have to be worried about the vitamin E being absorbed because it is absorbed and it's used by the body even if you're not consuming it um, with fat. Um, the same claim, by the way, is often made by about carotenoids such as lutein, zeaxanthin, lycopene, um, that these nutrients commonly found in low-fat plant foods just are simply not absorbable unless you consume them with fat. While this new, new study only looked at vitamin E, I think we can probably assume that the same is true with these other nutrients. Um, they're absorbed and used by the body even if you don't eat a lot of fat um, at the same time. And it's, it's interesting because I not only read the study, but I read, um, I often look at the comments online, what are people chattering about? And in several uh, online news articles and that sort of thing, the um, authors of the study, one of the authors of the study was quoted as saying, gosh, for years we've been telling people they gotta eat fat in order to absorb these vitamins. But as it turns out, that's not really true. Well, for years, people have been telling people to do a lot of things that aren't really true. Again, what I'm trying to sort out by delivering these kinds of broadcasts to you. I've looked around, by the way, and I can't even find a case report published in a medical journal describing somebody who's been determined to have something like a carotenoid deficiency or a dietary fat deficiency. As I've said many times, the problem here is that people are, it's too much. It's excess, not deficiency, that people are suffering from when they arrive here. Focusing on individual nutrients and trying to eat various combinations of nutrients at one time and other dietary manipulation is kind of a fruitless strategy that nobody ever gets right. And my gosh, the, the amount of time that it would take to sit down every day or week or whatever and plan out your meals and what you're going to eat trying to combine this with that and these nutrients with those nutrients, there, there are tens of thousands of nutrients in food. Just get the dietary pattern right. And if you focus on that, this all gets a lot easier. And I'm going to say something that might surprise some of you, but you know, I make my living in this field and um, I don't have to think about food all day long. I don't think about food all day long, actually. Um, I, I really focus on just getting the dietary pattern right and I spend my day on other things. I don't have time to think all day long about, gosh, did I eat enough fat at lunchtime because I sure did have a lot of tomatoes with lycopene. So don't make this harder than it needs to be and don't encourage other people to make this harder than it needs to be either, all right? Well, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And if you want to participate in our breast cancer campaign, um, email me at pampopper at msn.com. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.